When it comes to online reviews surrounding video games, especially challenging ones, I find people often lack the self-awareness to recognize their own limits or shortcomings as a player. You probably know someone like this, someone who is a little too quick to blame the game. I have to shoot the ceiling? Oh, come, why would I know that? Why would I ever have known to do that? Why would anyone know to do that? What utter bullshit? You know, I'm sorry, man. This is, I'm so sick of reviewers. It's a 10, it's a nine, game of the year. When was the last time you read a review by someone who recognized their own shortcomings and humbly took that into consideration while retaining a critical authority? Of course, why would someone want to call their gamer credentials into question unless the difficulty was somehow intertwined with the discourse in, say, a Souls-like fashion? Oh, do I win something? I'm only bringing up the modern From Software games as a shamelessly low-hanging example of the exception to the rule that is not telling your audience how much you suck at playing these games. Games can and will be too hard for some people and that's totally fine, even if it is their job to write about it. There are an infinite number of valid reasons anyone cannot enjoy any piece of media. And as long as they explain themselves appropriately, there's nothing wrong with that. Period. Full stop. No qualifiers. Next bit. I just wish there were more examples of people willing to share their own humility for the sake of greater discourse and well-rounded critiques. So what I want to do today is to recommend a good game I'm really, really bad at. Go play Crypt of the Necrodancer. game once in the dozens of hours I've put into it. And I still love it. I have made it to the crypt of the Necrodancer at least once, so I can at least confirm the title is accurate. Oh fuck, spoilers I guess for this game from- wait, when did this game come out again? Steam Early Access 2014? Jesus fuck, I am bad at this game, holy shit. What do you mean I'm still making up to this for? Oh no. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a top-down rhythm roguelite dungeon crawler game where once some Canadians looked at a DDR machine and said, you know what this could use, eh? Some more enemies besides your own two feet. And they turned out to be 100% right. This game has a fantastic, snappy tutorial the first time you boot it up. It puts you into one run you can quit out of if you want, and from there it lets you practice to your heart's content before going into its segmented rogue light or one-shot rogue-like story modes. You can even practice against encountered bosses and enemies, slow the game down even further in dance pad mode, travel zone by zone while unlocking semi-permanent upgrades, or try some puzzle rooms and challenge runs. This game really does have an incredible number of ways to accommodate anyone's playstyle, all the way up to an insane holy shit scale ceiling. So this is Crypt of the Necrodancer. It's a uh, rhythm roguelike where it's, it is turn-based, but all your uh, turns have to be made to the beat of the music. Uh, since we're playing Coda, uh, the hardest character of the game, we actually have three characters' properties rolled into one. So if I'm clearly not getting any better, why the fuck am I still playing this? You know how most games would be lucky to have one good soundtrack? This game includes six full remixes in just the base game. And all of them are good. You got your metal remix. Your EDM. Your MIDI chip tunes. Your 80 synth wave. Your what the fuck is a Dangan Ranpa? I don't know what this is, but I'm very happy for the people who do. Uh, 
And there's local co-op too, so you and your friend can play as Candace or other unlockable characters like Coral or uh, this guy and Duff... 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 Listen, I'm telling you, there's lots of unlockable characters, I just don't have any footage. But at least the game gives you other baked-in DLC characters like, um, uh, Mac Auto Neji. Hi, Nata. Ha! Jimmy. Junko Emo Shima. Chachki. Na 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 na. And these, what I presume to be mascot characters. One of them's a rabbit, the other is a bear. I don't fucking know. Moving on. The gameplay can be boiled down to picking a cardinal direction. And this is how you explore, attack, dig, and make all meaningful decisions to the beat of a song. You really don't have to know a dang thing at all about video games to see the disco floor light up to go, oh, uh, oh, oh, I get it. This is good. I'm doing good. Let's boogie. Hey there, skeleton. I got a bone to pick with you. hi -ya! Oh. He turned into lemons. And that's it. You basically know everything you need to know to make an informed decision on whether or not you like this game, or are wrong and no fun. Thanks for coming by. You can click away from the video now and return to whatever grim nightmare reality has brought you here today. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, lick the like bell and th thumb up. Uh, talk to you gamer girls later. Okay, bye. You might think I'm just bad at rhythm games. And granted, you'd be right. You know, that's okay. There are other games in this rhythm combat subgenre. Take Tango Gameworks' newest surprise hit, Hi-Fi Rush, a 3D action platformer game about the horrors of what happens when you unconditionally agree to Apple's terms and conditions. The combat, outside of its rhythm, involves smacking around and generally air comboing robot devils until they may cry in a beautiful art style. Hi-Fi Rush also lets dumb idiots such as myself still button mash through combat arenas by queuing up attacks so they always come out on the beat, even if your timing is horrendous. If you can attack on the beat though, hey, you get stronger attacks. That's some great positive reinforcement through subtle game design. But back to Necrodancer. You may have already drawn your own comparisons to the movement in this game being similar to chess pieces on a board. The developers are very aware of this. Unlike chess, however, they've also gone and taken an extra step to ensure that every enemy and boss in the game has a strategy to be found and exploited to beat them without taking any damage. You are never forced into a bad position where you have to give up a pawn, or in this case, you have to take damage. Every bad situation the player finds themselves in are theirs to blame alone. And you know, I find that strangely comforting. I can always try something different to make myself a better player, but I can't always fix a busted buggy or straight up unfair game if that's what's obstructing me from my goal. Every time you start a new run or make it into a new level, you are placed in an empty, featureless room with several exits, no hazards, and no enemies. The odds are stacked against you, yes, but unbeatable? Even with less than 1 HP and nothing but the starting dagger? Absolutely not. It's not a malicious game. It wants you to succeed. It wants you to fall into a rhythmic trance where you balance your loot and abilities against an ever-increasing amount of beats and baddies per minute. I like everything here except the unsatisfying answer that there may be some games I will never be able to play comprehensively, and not in a completionist sense either, even if I love everything about this game. I haven't even discussed any of the DLC, which is excellent in its own right. The original soundtrack by Danny Baranowski is a bop. Did I mention that the base game regularly goes on sale for less than a cup of coffee from your local union-busting slave-driving dystopic entity of your choice? <sighs> hey, do you hear that? It sounds so familiar. What the fuck?! If you told me there would ever be a sequel to Crypt of the Necrodancer that took its beat-based gameplay, the randomized layouts, and mixed it with the overworld stylings and classic Zelda tunes, I think I would have just punched you in the throat for putting that amazing idea out there with zero chance of it ever coming true. As if Nintendo would ever share their big marquee franchises out to anyone. And if they do, it's because it's Metroid and they don't give a fuck about Metroid. Give it to some Texans, though. They know how to make games about shooting stuff. 
and monkeys. Nintendo revealed Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring The Legend of Zelda in a Nintendo Direct on March 20th, 2019. Then it came out that same July. And it was amazing! You can play as Link, Cadence, or even Zelda herself. Something that people have been asking for for decades. And no, that doesn't count, you pedantic f Did I just use the word for incorrectly? It looks wrong, but it sounds right. Hey, look, a segue! <laughs> The overworld gets randomly generated every time you start a new game, and certain areas get randomized between reloads as well. But this is an otherwise old-school Zelda game with DDR controls. Zel... Zel DDR. But anyway, I bought it the day it became available for pre-order, and I've played it for over 12 hours now. How long to beat.com says it takes only about 6 hours to beat it. I'll give you two guesses as to how well I've... Okay, maybe I've almost seen credits for Necrodancer? Definitely not if I'm accounting for the DLC, and Zelda is one of my all-time favorite games -z 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 series. If anything was going to propel me to overcome this auditory arrhythmia, it would be Zelda. Or Metal Gear, come to think of it. Hey Konami, while you're trying to make games again? <laughs> Call up the folks at Brace Yourselves Games. Ask if they have any ideas about making a stealth game. That one's on the house. You're welcome. Wait, I got it. It's a DDRPG. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh? <coughs> Just play as the bard. He's easier. Eh, fuck you guys. All right. Let's wrap this up. Uh, let's see here. Review a retro style indie pixel art game? Check. Dumb editing jokes that trail on forever and end up tell a multi billion dollar corporation what to do? Check. Low effort memes? Check. Obligatory live action sketch? And with a tenuous connection to Dark Souls, that about rounds out this review. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a perfect disco dungeon out of time, feeling as natural to the pick up and play heyday of arcades with its retro aesthetic and similar sense of challenge to overcome, but without the mean spirited and greedy game design meant to steal your next quarter or life. If you're like me though, which is to say, bad. Go give any one of the many soundtracks a listen on what I'm pretty sure is most major music streaming platforms. Each artist probably has a band camp if Epic hasn't fucked it up yet. Yet. Even if I can't beat it, I'm never gonna stop loving this game. And hey, there's a direct sequel coming out soon-ish called Rift of the Necrodancer, which looks to be a combination of Guitar Hero, Super Punch-Out, and a WarioWare minigames collection? That's pretty fucking cool. It might even be out depending on when I finish this video. Speaking of... Gamer credentials.